right, so let's get started. Welcome to Creativity and Esotericism for Musicians. Um, this is my first class of this kind, so I really appreciate you taking the time to check in with me. Really uh, am excited about the stuff that we'll be talking about today. So uh, before we hop into things, I want to make sure that you have a pen and uh, pen and pencil, not a pen and pencil, pen and paper, uh, or a note taking app. I really do prefer pen and paper, but if you uh, don't have anything handy, a uh, note app will do. Grab some water, grab a snack, just be ready to settle in here for about an hour. And uh, sorry if I get distracted, I'm still admitting people into the Zoom because they turned off my ability to just have an open meeting. So um, try to keep your environment low noise and low distraction. Um, my cat is currently sleeping, but she can wake up and start meowing, uh, which kind of sucks, but um, she's a lot louder if I try to uh, kick her out, so I'm just gonna <laughs> hope that she doesn't get too upset with me when she wakes up. Uh, and just clear, engaged, and focused attitude. So um, we are talking about a lot of concepts that, you know, they're not necessarily accepted in Western science. And um, I do try to explain things as best as I understand them in my perception, but the simple fact of the matter is that you have to kind of take a leap of faith to some degree um, if you're take if you're not a hundred percent certain if you believe these concepts just take them as an axiom and try to enjoy them as much as you can just with an, an open mind just temporarily you don't have to change your beliefs permanently but just take take a moment to just uh, ask what if what if you were a lot more powerful than you think you are um, I do hear some mics on. Um, I can't hear if you're ads asking questions, but um, if, you, if you would like to ask a question. Okay, I'm going to see if I can just mute. Uh, Yo! Hi! Oh, hi, Jade! <laughs> How are you doing? Good. I just saw, I literally just saw this like 20 minutes ago and I was like, oh, I'm going to join. Fantastic. Thanks Sorry for making it. Oh, no, that's fine. Uh, people are just kind of coming in. I'm just doing a little bit of an introduction. So just kind of going over what we're going to need for today. Uh, pen and paper, um, something to sip on because we're going to be working here for about an hour. Um, okay. A little bit longer if we, you know, get a good discussion going. And, yeah, just make sure you don't have a lot of noise in your environment and you're attuned to the mystical, magical, occult powers of sound that we are going to explore together. Sounds good. I can tell by your smile that you're into it and your hat. It's very witchy. I love it. <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's... Just move on a little bit here. So today we're going to get you a juicier and more engaged focus with your practice and your musical work. We want you to feel the juice. It can be very boring to just repeat stuff over and over again. And, you know, being a musician takes a lot of repetitive action. If you can make it juicier, make it more intriguing, make it more, endow it with more meaning. That's going to keep you practicing, keep you interested, keep you, you know, spending the time that it's going to take to develop yourself. You are also going to build an enhanced relationship to your practice environment and to your instrument. So, you know, kind of getting that closer relationship with whatever God forms, planetary forces, whatever, and also with endowing your instrument with some metaphysical juice as well. I want to really drive home that your 
creative work is beautiful. It is important. And I want you to have a, a stronger and deeper, more mystical appreciation for your creativity. Um, you know, it's talk a little bit about this later, just how we don't really, uh, we're not very kind to the musicians and the artists among us. And I want us to be a little bit kinder. Um, I also, oops, I'm also just going to change which webcam is going here because I really hate this built-in webcam. There we go. Oh, see? Yeah, look at so much cuter with this one. <laughs> okay. Thank you before too. Oh, thank, thank you, Jade. Okay. Um, and I'm hoping here that we can get a little bit more of a connection going between um, other creative, magical musician maniacs, because I feel like there's not very many of us, or at least uh, there's not too many people who are open about their practices. And um, I want to build a, a space where we can be a little bit more, I don't know, explicit. We don't need to hide in the shadows anymore. You don't need to protect things for centuries because people are going to literally come burn you. Uh, it's not like that anymore. So we need a different paradigm. All right, so that's what you're going to get. How we're going to do that, we're going to, I'm going to talk a little bit about the nature of magic and making magic music a little bit. Like I ended up just having so much material for this class that I had to just cut a bunch of stuff because it's going to take me, I probably will do this as a series because there's just a lot of stuff. I was really worried when I first started that I wasn't going to have enough to share with you guys and I ended up having like the total other problem. So um, again, we're going to talk about enriching your internal and external environment in a metaphysical and physical way to aid in your goals, both practically and spiritually. Um, we're going to talk about using planetary magic and uh, God forms to aid us. And lastly, making your instruments or whatever tools you're using into servitors. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with servitors, but it's that's a nice juicy concept. I was just studying that recently. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, I really like the idea of servitors. Just you have like this little line of code, this little semi-alive little buddy who's helping you out with, uh, with little things. So um, where are we here? Who am I? All right. So I am Catherine Anaka. Uh, I am the owner and lead educator at Guitar Witch. That's my juicy esoteric um, music instruction and whatever blog. And uh, Flourish Music and Creative Arts, which is more for the normies, more uh, family friendly. Um, yeah, but also, you know, endowed with a lot of the same stuff that I talk about here. Um, I'm a multi-instrumentalist, composer, and dancer. Um, I've been playing music since I was very young. I've been writing music since I first picked up a piano, picked up a piano, first, since I first started playing piano around age eight. Um, I've been teaching music since 2008 and teaching a little bit of belly dance here and there since 2018. Um, I have a degree in psychology and a certificate um, in counseling, and I have a really strong interest in metaphysics, neuropsychology, sound therapy, all that kind of stuff, and this interest in metaphysics and learning is how I'm able to juggle all of these different things that I do. Um, so here's some of my bands and my projects. Um, yeah, there's, there's me, look at me go. It's all the stuff that's all on uh, guitarwitch.ca if you're interested in looking at more of that stuff. Uh, the really juicy occult band is the Black Metal Project Sorgonasia. Um, I do a bunch of stuff for this band uh, as well as my partner Axor does drums and bass in this. We both do vocals. Um, I did this art, he did that art, he did the logo. So. Pretty, uh, pretty fascinating uh, little, um, little uh, relationship that we have as far as this 
Van Gogh's. It's kind of spooky how we each have matching kind of stuff. So anyways, all that stuff is available at guitarwitch.ca, workshops, lessons, all the projects, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, that's who I am and why am I doing this? So there's lots of reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, magical music and art invokes wonder and inspires. Great music should transport you from the mundane into a special psychological state, much like a deep and successful meditation or an eerily insightful dream. Making magical music and art has the power to deepen the mystery of life and death, regeneration and disintegration. That's my honest belief. In the words of uh, this phenomenal composer, Iannis Zanakis, I don't know if I'm saying that right, uh, the listener must be gripped and whether he likes it or not, drawn into the flight path of the sounds without special training being necessary. The sensual shock must be just as forceful as when one hears a clap of thunder or looks into a bottomless abyss. So, basically, magical music, it can just transform your life. Uh, magic music and art opens something to us physically and spiritually without needing special training or dedication. Things like ritual, meditation, psychedelics, and random moments of gnosis or sacred experiences can also get that same deep appreciation of the universe and of, you know, our very interconnected place in it, but these can be really complex um, things to kind of try to learn. It can be very unreliable. And I feel like music can just be, can give you that sensation. Even if you're an atheist and you have no interest in psychology or, you know, spirituality at all, people still can feel that with music. Um, it gives you the goosebumps. People get really pulled in and that's, that's what it's all about. Um, I also have like a little bit of a personal beef. Uh, a lot of musicians talk about the occult in lyrical content because they think it's cool. They think that it's, but they don't really know why it's cool. They just think that it's cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, they, we they, talked about this. Yeah, in my interview while. with you, Jade. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna pop, like, I'm just gonna pop you in the thing. So you're gonna get recorded. You can just be, you can just yeah. be here. You're, 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 you're I'm ready. Like ready you're, it. yeah, you got, you got, you're, you're sexy. You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's cool. I feel like you're actually talking to me. No one else is talking. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like, is anybody else here? Are they here Part of the show. Like that's that? fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, so this people who talk about the occult in music, but don't actually practice it, it's kind of like sitting on top of a treasure chest and you're taking photos of the treasure chest and you're singing about this treasure chest, but you do not open the treasure chest and access the actual treasure inside of the treasure chest. That just drives me nuts. So again, I want to be more explicit. I want to be more um, just like pushy about, about knowing that the occult and that spiritual power is so interrelated with artistic achievement. And I think we know that a lot, like people who... Um, I don't know. It's just it's such a common trope throughout history. It's like you you sell your soul to Satan for musical ability, but it's it's a little bit more complicated that than that. I mean, you can make it that simple if you want, but you don't have to sell your soul. You can like it's there's a middle ground here. Um. So basically, I'm just selfish. I just want that that music and that uh that art to exist like I just really want it there so that's why I'm doing this because I want more of that um I've been in this sphere for several years and I do think I might have something to offer I'm very humble about that there's so many people who know more than me but I'm trying my best I think I have something here um, and I feel like true esoteric vibrational warriors are few and far between, and I want to meet you. I want to help you if I can. I want to collaborate. I just want to see you guys. Also, I'm hiring, so I thought this might be a cool way to meet some people, huh? People are feeling my vibe. 
Yeah, just just let me know. I am looking for some help because I am getting totally overwhelmed. I'm gonna okay. I'm good that actually. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'll, I'll hit you up. Show. Sure. Awesome. Okay. So oh, look, another person's here. Hi, other person. Hi, Abel G. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, can you hear me? I can hear you. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Okay, nice to meet you, everybody. Yeah, you can have your mic on if you want to share something. You can have your mic on, face on. It's it's totally up to you. It's very casual. All, All right. right. So, on the nature of magic. So, everyone, one of the things that I really love about the occult is everyone has this totally mishmashed and different um experience with it so some people know a lot about gnosticism some people know a lot about egyptian stuff some people are really into like viking runes you know it's just it's, you know hoodoo there's so many different traditions and stuff so it's i'm just going to start off with the basics like occult science that's kind of what got me into it so Magic at its simplest is creation according to one's will. So I view, like, you know, there's this whole mystery about how your consciousness translates into physical movement, even in the brain. I view anything that you want and you're getting that is an act of magic. So it can be totally mundane. It could be, I want to go grab some chips, you go grab some chips. Um... So how this occurs can be conceived of in several ways. So some people believe it's in accordance to known physical laws, and some people believe that re reality is affected by supernatural or metaphysical forces. So this could be science that we just don't understand. It could be really spooky stuff. It doesn't, it, for me, it doesn't really matter. Um, whether it's, whether our, you know, power to create stuff is based off of, um, metaphysical or physical causes it doesn't doesn't really bother me i'm all about practicality does this belief make my life better right does it make me work harder then great right um does it make reality more interesting and mysterious and special does it make me have a reason to live all of that good stuff then awesome uh if it harms none do what thou will Love is the law, love under will. So just a little bit more on... Um, Pat from Edmonton is giving a lecture on like uh, occultism and its uh, associations with music and stuff. Is it the thing you wanted to do? Yeah. Oh, I can I hear someone. <laughs> someone's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that might be me. Is that, oh, is that you? Is that Mark? Hi. That's me. Yeah. That's yeah, and it's Catherine from Edmonton talking about weird stuff. Yeah. I didn't know I was off mute. Sorry about uh, that. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just glad the audience is listening. So, oh, hi, Mark. Oh, it's nice to see you. I wasn't sure what Mark it was, but that's my buddy from Saskatoon. <laughs> awesome. All right. So. Um, just to get a little bit more into the science, occult science-y part of stuff, just because it does, I feel like we have such a rational paradigm, it really helps me if I can understand that there might be some rational basis to it, it really helps my, yeah, just belief system, right? So, uh, one, one theory proposed by occult theorist and practitioner Peter J. Carl is that the universe is filled with aether, ether. Uh, matter which is of a probabilistic nature so this can be related to prana it can be related to all sorts of different stuff um, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna mute buddy there um, where is my next one Oops, there we go. so this matter um, or energy exists between chaos and being which is solid matter solid reality solid you know it's we can get all weird into uh you know different quantum stuff but that just gets silly 
basically, like he proposes that the ether is where magic can be used to inter influence reality. And again, there's a lot of debate and stuff around that, but that's that's a long conversation. So again, whether change according to our thoughts and atten intentions occurs through psychological or metaphysical means makes no real difference on the outcome. Our will and attention influences reality in some way, whether that be by a very basic means, such as I want to do X, so I do Y, or complex means such as I desire. So like, let's say I want, I want to go eat some chips, so I go get some chips. How about I desire to make more money, so I do X, Y, Z to develop a system whereby money comes to me more easily. Like, you can do that metaphysically, physically, both, right? Because of this, we are practicing magic at all times. This is an Alastair Crowley quote as well. And thus, it makes sense to begin to learn the art and science of magic well, because your, your thoughts are, to some degree, controlling your entire reality. Again, whether it's just your psychology or whether it has metaphysical influence, making sure that you are aware of how those thoughts are impacting you makes a huge difference in your life. So how can we be better magicians? So lots of really good books out there. Um, I asked a question in the event on Facebook about books. Um, Peter J. Carroll has a book called Libernal and it's two books in this, Libernal and Psychonaut, which I really enjoy. Yeah, getting some thumbs up there. That's a really good one. Um, this is actually by um, Salvador Dali, which is 50 Secrets of Magic Craftsmanship. Really fascinating book. I was thinking about grabbing magic books and then I didn't. <laughs> this was just off of my shelf. Um, there's one more I thought was over here, but uh, regardless, lots of good stuff out there. Um, this is a very short thing. Just a couple things that I've kind of noticed are very similar between different systems. Cleansing, having some sort of cleansing or purging practice, um, such as meditation where we're just quiet. It's like a purge um, or a silence of stimulus. Um, elimination and cleanse diets, fasting practices, uh, safely and gently to begin with. Again, do your research on that kind of stuff for sure. Um, and digital detoxes. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to do the digital detox. However, very, very um, centering and really helps you get in line with your local vibration and your personal um, atmosphere, I guess. Reminds you who the fuck you are. Yes, it <laughs> does remind you who you are. And, uh, you know, I, a lot of times, like for myself, I use, um, I use the internet for lots of great stuff, but I also use it to self-medicate. Uh, I use it to self-medicate anxiety. I use it to self-medicate, um, depression. I use it to as like a soothing mechanism when I really should be thinking about those things. So for example, I'm depressed because X shitty situation is going on. Instead of just scrolling on my phone, maybe I should do something about it, right? Um, yeah. But again, like you're learning great stuff, but it's good to take a break from learning and just let your brain catch up to you as well. Um, number two, so there's a lot of exploring going on. A lot of practices recommend things like journaling, dream journaling, uh, doing that kind of stuff every day will make just the craziest difference in your life. It's, it's crazy how something as simple as writing in a book, just random thoughts, 30 minutes a day mm -hmm. will make your whole life seem different. Um, making different kinds of music, art, and dance. So you know, this is for musicians here, but I recommend, like, if you don't paint, you should paint. If you don't do some sort of dance, I know guys, guys are, like, all weird about dance, and a lot of people think it's, like, not cool, or it's gay, or whatever, <laughs> but, you know, no one has to know. You can just 
no one has to know if you're nervous about it. Like, you can just do it alone, right? <laughs> if YouTube is a thing, you can learn out, learn some ballet dancing. You don't need to be weird about it. You can just <laughs> enjoy yourself, right? <laughs> it's good stuff, right? Yeah, it's good stuff. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, these kinds of things, like, help you learn who you are, where you've been, what your mind does when you're asleep. So digging through your conscious and unconscious for clues as to what you truly want, what you have to offer the world, and what you should put your esoteric energies towards. Lastly, doing. Oh my god. People will not do. People will read. People will have intense like libraries of occult books. And when I ask them what their daily practice looks like, They'll tell me they don't have one, right? Super, super common. The armchair occultist. And that's like just a, such a personal pet, pet peeve of mine. Um, start praying. Start practicing. Start acting with intention. It doesn't need to take a lot of time. You can just do it. And, you know, sometimes uh, the most powerful spell is no more complicated than dialing a number into a phone although that can be the scariest spell. <laughs> but even just those basic things that you need to take control of your life, you know, do them. Get your hands dirty, cast the circle, burn the offering, say the, you know, conjure the demon, do whatever. The, the chances that it are going to go hor horribly for you are very low. If they do go horribly, there's ways to rem remedy them. And, you know, the gods love those who, who work hard and who are daring. Um, mistakes made in earnest are easily forgivable. And if malady occurs, important learning does also. So have some daring. All right. So here comes the meat and potatoes for today. So I would like you to grab a piece of paper. I really do prefer a piece of paper. Um, you can write it in an app on your phone. I know if you're watching on Facebook, it doesn't really like let you exit Facebook to, um, to use your notes app. I really just do like a piece of paper because we're going to choose one main goal for creative, vibrational, delicious, musical expansion. Does everyone have your paper? Jade, where's your paper? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit! I hear hot. <laughs> I ready. Okay, you're ready. Okay. Take my notes. Okay, I love it. I love it. Okay. So choose something specific for your goal. Choose something measurable for your goal. Choose something exciting, a little frightening, that gives you butterflies or shivers. It should do something to you physically. All right. You have to have a time limit on it. I don't want to just like, I just want to be a better guitarist. That's bullshit. That's like so unmotivating and boring. That has nothing to do with anything. Like you need to be very specific and it's got to be something good, like putting out an album, right? It's got to be something good, like playing a, playing a big show and you got to tell someone about it. So I see a lot of people just staring at me. Like, does that mean you have it written down already? No, hang on. Okay. <laughs> Screen caps, bro. I'm almost done. What, Mark? Screen caps. Screen caps? You're good? Okay. <laughs> you got it. Okay, I'll just give you guys a minute. Drink some tea. And when you pick it like it should, there should be a physical reaction. It should to make make your spine do do a thing. Are are we ready guys? Are we ready? Yep. Okay, you're good. And it, and it's and it turns you on, it makes you excited, it makes your spine do the thing. Mm. 
I don't feel like your spine is really doing the thing, Jade. You know what? I'm not sure. Yeah, think about it. <laughs> I had it. I just lost all my videos. Where did you guys go? Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, I know. Yeah. You're good? Yeah. Oh. I, I don't know where the videos of you guys went. I could I double clicked on it and now you guys are gone. So so anyways, you'll have you'll have to just communicate with me with your voices because I don't know how I did that. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I, I was liking looking at your faces. Now I have to just think with my brain, and that's horrifying. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now that you have something nice and juicy. Oh, there. I think I found you guys. There we go. I found you guys again. Thanks for bearing with me. Awesome. Hi. Okay. So achieving your goal, where you're going to get all sorts of juicy, esoteric deliciousness into our, our magic powers, which will help bring us this goal. So first, having is evidence of wanting. So we are going to just, as a premise, again, you don't have to believe this forever, but if you just believe this for a moment, that you want everything in your life, that reality is perfect just as it is. Just take that as a premise for a moment and think about how, how that makes you feel. Does that feel awesome? Is that horrifying? Right? Um, and not having is evidence of not wanting. There's probably something about what you want that you actually don't want. So what do I mean by all of that weird stuff? So this is kind of based off of, there's a few different practices, but um, I really like Carolyn Elliott's uh, existential kink is what she calls it. And so basically having is evidence of wanting. Let yourself feel full and juicy and lustful desire for what you already have. So, you know, all of it. This, this, oh, it says shiftiness. No, like, no, shittiness. The shittiness in your life, the lack, everything. There's something about it that's comfortable for you. Um, for me, like, you know, being somewhat poor, that keeps me punk rock, right? <laughs> That keeps me hardcore because I'm actually like kind of a regal Victorian person and that is very off-putting to my social circle and to myself and it's just weird, right? Um, so, so it keeps me, it keeps me hardcore, it keeps me punk rock, uh, you know, just try to laugh at whatever it is, the poverty, the obscurity, the whatever it is that just that you hate about your life just for a few minutes oh, i'm like editing this as we go just for a couple minutes we're just gonna laugh we're just gonna just say fine universe this is what i wanted great and that doesn't mean you need to forgive anyone or yourself for those circumstances if someone's beating your ass you don't need to forgive them you don't need to forgive systemic oppression you don't need to forgive the upper classes for your you know poverty stricken bullshit it's just just for yourself just to try to find some joy in your life just for a minute right yeah. Can can you can Hi. you can you laugh at it all just for a minute, and just look around and <laughs> like be right like, now? "Fine, self. Like this is sweet. I'm nice and safe here. I know what to expect tomorrow. Um, my family might be whatever, but at least like they know how to react to me. If all of a sudden I'm successful, how is that going to change my friendships? How is that going to change my relationships? How is that going to change, you know?" If you're if you're used to not having stuff, like maybe you don't know how to manage what you want. Like all of a sudden, 
you know, so for me, I'm was very, I'm very anxious about sharing myself. I'm anxious about being on camera. I'm anxious about what people might think of my voice or what I have to say. Um, I'm fucking terrified of it, honestly. But you're doing great. Thank you thank very much for sharing. Thank you. I, yeah. And so, but you know, I accept that that's a part of me that like really loves not doing anything. It really loves the safety of like just being a little, oh, I can always just whine about it. Like, oh, I never got popular because, uh, you know, society just wasn't ready for me or, oh, whatever. Like it lets you sit in your excuses, right? So um, it's, it's very safe to not have things that are special because, you know, uh, I think it's that there's like an Asian saying where it's like the, the um, nail that sticks up gets hammered down right and that is so true in our interpersonal relationships it's true in school it's true at work if you're just sticking out in whatever way people will try to hammer you down and sometimes it's just safer to just be whatever mediocre quiet not you don't have a lot of albums out you're just chilling right there's a lot of safety in that um where am i god i'm all over the place there we go. So not having is evidence of not wanting. So that's re really quite related, right? So there's things that we just hate and resent and fear about things that are objectively good. And so when Carol Carolyn Elliott talks about this stuff, it's called existential kink because you're not supposed to get off on humiliation. You're not supposed to get off on poverty. You're not supposed to get off on, you know, being ignored. It's very kinky. It's very S&M to want to be rejected and stepped on and, and everything. But there may just be like the littlest part of yourself that's like, step on me harder, daddy. Right? <laughs> just, a, just a little voice. And if we just like say, sure. We just like let it, you know, accept it or just try to show it some love and we love and accept ourselves even in our whole taboo, kinky nature. Maybe life will get a little bit easier for us. It's part of the solve part of magic or shadow work when we're working with our shadow and we're working with desires that are not um, in the conscious mind. We're making that subconscious conscious. If something's conscious, we can work with it. We can change it. We can influence it. If it's just like hiding down here, it's still running the show, but you're not working on it, right? So underneath that goal that you wrote, I want you to make two little columns and they are the related columns. And one of them is going to say, I love not having blank. I'm just going to make a new slide to do this actually because I didn't write this out. So the first column is going to be like, I love my current life because it gives me whatever. And so you can write more stuff when you have time because you can do this every day and you'll be amazed at what comes out every single day if you do this for 30 days you still have crazy stuff coming out and on the other side it's i deeply hate and resent uh my goal because so i've been doing this every day uh with a partner for 18 days and it's just like the craziest shit comes out. So I deeply hate and resent being, you know, a successful musician and music educator because that means people are looking at me. People are judging me. I'm not willing to feel people's emotions. I'm not willing for people to rely on me. Do you know how unreliable I am? And all of a sudden people will be needing me. Or all of a sudden I'll be on like tour and I'll need to perform fucking gross, right? <laughs> it's gross. <laughs> and I'm, I'm trying to work through it, right? But there's, so just take a moment here, take a breath, 
and just kind of explore what those things are for you. Hopefully my horrifying uh, whatever psychological hang-ups have inspired you. Does, does anyone have something juicy they want to share? You don't have to share it, but. <laughs> but it'd be, it'd be more fun if you did. <laughs> Do you have a good one, Jade? Come on. Yeah. I deeply hate and resent my goal because I have to talk to people. Gross. <laughs> I I get it. I get it. Yeah, like part like one that keeps coming up for me is um needing to be nice to people. Or like I um, you know, I've been told a lot, like I'm I'm a Rami Aries, I'm a pretty traditional Aries, so I can interrupt people, I can talk over people. I can be a difficult person. And so I'm really worried that my attitude is going to make me enemies, hurt someone important's feelings, uh, ruin me. Uh, I'm You're unlovable. Aries? Yeah, I'm Aries. <laughs> but, I'm Aries too. Oh, awesome. You know, so for you... me, the, the, thing, the thing that make, makes me uh, hate and resent my goal is ha having to be reliable because I need to balance out all of the other responsibilities yeah in my life mm -hmm. with uh the show you know mm -hmm, for sure and that's that's a really common one too and it's like the thing is these fears are not always rational because it's like if you say part of your goal is doing these shows um you're always doing lots of stuff with your time you're always managing yourself okay you can even have it as part of your goal is i want to manage my time better right um but you're still always i feel like you're always gonna have that little voice that's like it's it's like a it's like a whining child like the more i do this kind of stuff the more desperate it gets so it's like yelling at me it's like you are stupid you are unlovable you are too old it's too late if you would have been famous or whatever it would have happened already just give up and it's like this little desperate voice and when you first start writing them out i feel like they they seem so plausible and they seem so rational and you can like really um you're like oh maybe i am not lovable but once you start like spending some time with it and writing it out it's like you can manage your shit right like you are totally capable of doing a show and being an employee a parent uh whatever people have been doing it for literally thousands of years right there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing that makes you incapable of doing something that hundreds and thousands of millions of people have done. But that little voice is always going to be there telling you, don't even bother. Don't even try because you're not going to be able to handle it. And the idea is to make that little voice little and to take it out of this shadowy unconscious. Because normally we try to avoid this kind of stuff. We're normally trying to suppress this kind of stuff. And we want to just pull it all out. So it's, it's, we got to just puke it all out. It's poison, right? So um, one thing that you can do with these little voices is you can just keep writing them out every day and tearing them up every day. So I view it kind of as, <laughs> it's going to be gross, but it's kind of like taking a shit. You should take a shit every day. And it's like if your body is and your brain is like giving you this garbage all the time, you got to take out the garbage. And it's like it's telling you that garbage every day. It's like you got to write it up and tear it up and throw it out, burn it every day and just get it the hell out of your body and look at it for what it is because it's bullshit. Right. It's it's that little ego trying to protect you from change and it's trying to protect you from 
becoming something different that it doesn't understand. It's doing its best. Like, honestly, it's trying to protect you. It's, it's very survival oriented. It's not growth oriented. So it wants you to be accepted by your tribe. It wants you to not piss off your family. It wants you to make sure that you have food on the table. Your ego is doing its best, but sometimes it's just wrong, right? Like you doing a show, it's going to come up and it's going to say all this little crap to you. But it's the thing is, it's like you're not going to die if you change. Your life is not going to turn into an unmanageable chaos if you are doing this thing but that that subconscious is going to keep telling you that so for me i just need to keep writing it out keep burning it just keep getting it out of my body and then it's actually crazy the new stuff that comes in because honestly i wouldn't be doing this if i didn't do this work because it's <laughs> it's still like honestly terrifying um <laughs> Like I have, I have really bad imposter syndrome. So I've been teaching music since 2008. I'm still certain I suck. Uh, Paul McCartney has, has uh, imposter syndrome. Paul McCartney of the fucking Beatles, one of the most famous singers and well-loved singers in the fucking entire history of music thinks that he sucks. It has nothing to do with reality. It really doesn't. It's all your like ego and it's, it's, it's crazy. Anyways, um, I could talk about this. Voice that you mentioned. Yeah, you got it I too. You it. got the little voice. Uh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we all do. Hey, <laughs> do you want to tell us what your little voice has to say? Uh, it, it is related with with you're not going to accomplish your goal. Uh huh. So mainly. <laughs> Yeah, so you're not going to accomplish it, so it's not even worth it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your energy. Energy is a finite resource. Time's a finite resource. It's like this little poverty mentality telling you, like, it'll, it's, it's a waste of time. Don't bother. It's like, you got, you got just as much time as anyone else in the world. You got just as much brains. Like, you know, like, it's just, it's just garbage, right? And like, um, one of the things I think I talk about a little bit, I think I wrote this down a little bit later too, is you don't have to be Beethoven to make it worth it. Being, a, I used to put a lot of pressure on myself that I have to be a genius in order to be worthy. In order for me to have something to say, it has to be something brilliant and it has to be something totally unique. And that's just not the point. It's not the point. Like the point of making music and making art is to share your emotional experience and to exactly like this is a fucking gift from the universe. This is, you know, uh, Steve Vai, he's like my favorite guitarist and he's pretty wild as far as occult stuff. Like he, the man is a wizard. Like I saw him live and it was insane. Anyways. You went to the occult? Oh, I yeah. Know. Oh, Oh, I could talk about Steve I for a really long time too, but <laughs> I'll, we'll, I'll do that later. Um, but he, he said, like, if you don't honor your uh, creativity, you're basically insulting God. And so it doesn't matter if what you're doing is um, if you think that it's generic, if you think that, oh, this sounds too much like someone else doesn't fucking matter. That's a critic's job to, to criticize you. It's not your job. Your job is to keep making stuff and honor your inspiration. And that's where if you clog yourself up, you're not going to get anything else. And if, if you're insulting the inspiration that you're getting, like, why would inspiration keep coming to you? You'll just get clogged. And uh, yeah, it's I, I, I find that very true. So anyways, it's a very long winded discussion today. <laughs> What internal and external forces can can you conjure to aid in your quest? So, you know, we talked about some of those internal uh, blockages and stuff like that. But basically, you're like this kitty. The light just poof. You know, you don't even know how special you are. You are your most important asset as a musician and a magician and in every aspect of your life. You are an expression of the divine right people treat themselves with such disrespect and disregard oh god do we hate ourselves like it's <laughs> like i say stuff to myself that i would never ever say to my worst enemy <laughs> like right um 
this is a line from a Furs song. I, I love Furs as far as black metal goes, but you are a shape of the ever change. Like the universe is always shifting. You are, you know, the explosion of stars and you are an essential and consequential part of the universe that cannot be extracted from the whole. You like we are all just exploding stardust and if you didn't exist that would mean that the whole universe doesn't exist. Like you cannot separate yourself from the rest of matter. Um we are the universe experiencing itself. Yes, I yeah, I love that. I love my Bill Hicks. I love all of it. It's very good. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's just the truth. Like it really I really think that you can't like you could argue with it I guess, but it's like it doesn't make logical sense to me. I'm a very pragmatic person too, and it's like I'm an animist. If it's if something's live, it's all live. I don't know. Uh in my mind, you are literally a god or at least part of god, sacred reality, the universe, however you like to put it. Right. So what you're doing is important and it has an influence on everything else. So we're going to pronounce our strengths. We want the body and mind to become a finely tuned instrument. We are the crystal through which the universal light shines through and our physical and psychological constitution is what determines the spectrum of life, light that spills forth. So... It's like dark side of the moon, man. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about these things. So enlisting plant allies, very important for your physical constitution. Uh, a little bit about planetary and God form, natural magic, and uh, turning your instruments and equipment into servitors. That's the big juicy one. Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter, really. Like, you, you can do all this kind of stuff to help you, but whatever works for you... Like, lots of people don't know about any of this stuff, and they're still totally incredible musicians and stuff, but, you know, you can use all of this stuff to help you. Your will and your work, which are sacred and essential. So, first, plant allies. A lot of people know about herbology and stuff like that, but so I'll just kind of go over quickly. Um, also a disclaimer, all of these plants have helped me a lot, but everyone's really different. Everyone's biochemistry is different. So, um, what works for me might be dangerous for you, might not work for you. Um, if something's strong enough to hurt you, it's strong enough, or strong enough to help you, it's strong enough to hurt you as well. So again, if you're taking anything that has a strong effect on your biochemistry, Please be careful and pay attention to your body's responses. Uh, also, just building a relationship with things you eat and use for magical purposes is really important. Like, I, I am an animist. I don't know. If, if, if you're a sacred piece of stardust, then that means that all the plants and living beings and everything around you is too. I am a total hippie when it comes to that. Um, it just feels right to me, man. Just my feet, you know, in the grass and connecting with everything. That's, that's my happy place, right? Um, studies have well been shown that uh, music and talking has effect on plant growth and chemical composition. So if your plant is happy, it's literally going to make you do better, which is pretty cool. Uh, plants also communicate with each other biochemically. So if you are, um, if one plant is experiencing drought, for example, it can send a chemical signal to other plants to say, hey, close your pores because a drought is coming. Um, so if you're mean and you're bashing stuff around you and stuff, I honestly do believe that that has a strong energetic effect on everything else around you, uh, especially plants. So best effects that you can get from plants uh, are ones that you nurture yourself or you develop a relationship with or are purchased from someone who's done those things. So there is, there's way more crazy hippie people out there than just me. You'd be surprised. Like all these grandmas and stuff, they like love their plants. So if you can get some local food, you'd be just in, amazed at how witchy these like old Roman Catholic ladies really are. They have no idea. <laughs> I love it. Um, just the practice of gratitude alone has benefits for your well-being. So if you say thank you to your food, if you say thank you to plants and stuff, that helps you 
regardless of whether that has any effect on the plants. Again, it's it's kind of that, does it have a metaphysical effect or a psychological effect? I, I don't really care. It's good. It's good stuff, right? Do you want to be an asshole or do you want to be nice? It's, it's nicer to be nice. Um, so qu quickly, uh, this will all be uploaded, so I'm not going to read through all of this stuff because we, we have, you know, some pretty good co uh, conversations about other stuff. Oregano has, uh, effects on your immunity. It's anti-inflammatory. It's an antioxidant, antifungal, antibacterial. It ha is absolutely incredible, right? You can grow it in your garden, buy it for like 60 cents off of, you know, some organic hippie person when it's dry, right? Basil, this isn't even holy basil. Holy basil has its whole other kind of group of stuff. I just wanted to show mostly stuff that we have in our cupboards. Um, there's so many different rituals and stuff you can do with these as well. You might want to look up that kind of stuff a little bit more closely. People have their preferred like online sources for occult information that I find for stuff like this. I usually just go by how I feel. Um, about certain things. I'm like, oh, licorice. Very, very Jupiterian. And it's like, I don't really know why. It just is. Um, <laughs> so, so follow your intuition on that kind of stuff. But um, basil, just regular garden basil, anti-stress, anti-inflammatory, pain reduction, right? Beautiful stuff. Sage, just regular garden sage, not sacred white cultural appropriation sage. Um, just by itself has effects on your memory, attention, and it can it can encourage uh, the effects of other substances. So I'll talk a little bit about huperzine later. Huperzine is uh, is used for memory. Really cool little compound. But if it's combined with sage, combined with this uh, borneol, which is in sage, it has. Uh, more, uh, it's more effective in improving memory impairment in rats with Alzheimer's. Uh, sage also contains thujone, which is the active ingredient in absinthe. Regular garden sage just grows that, right? The more you know. Okay. Uh, rosemary is my personal favorite. Um, I am obsessed with rosemary. Uh, intellect, concentration, memory. Uh, lots of the same chemicals that are in time of sage, uh, lots of beneficial stuff. Um, yeah, really strongly correspond with memory and intellect in folklore. And all of these herbs, they will have different ratios and concentrations of the phytochemicals that I'm talking about, again, depending on the health of the plant, the species, all that kind of stuff. Um, and aloe vera, I just gotta always mention this because it's crazy. Like everyone knows that it's good for burns on your skin, but it's also just absolutely incredible for anti-aging. Um, it helps with collagen synthesis, wound healing, all this incredible stuff. Um, just briefly here too, you can do a lot of, like the research is crazy just on plant compounds alone. Uh, lion's mane is just absolutely incredible for memory, mood, uh, anti-anxiety, all that kind of stuff, learning, which is a very, very important skill for us as musicians. We're always having to, for me, like my memory is horrible. A lot of us like smoking weed too. This is a way that you can sort of, uh, maybe help yourself out a little bit. Um, <laughs> uh, so exactly how it works, we're not sure, but... Um, it has such a strong effect on neuronal growth. It beats neuronal growth factor in some uh, studies. And neuronal growth factor is literally the thing that your body makes to make nerves grow. Uh, Hooperzine, I was talking about a little bit before. It's from a Chinese club moss. And this one, if you combine with sage, is more effective. And another one, this isn't really a plant compound. It's uh, extracted from various different things. Sometimes it's meat sourced. You can find uh, vegetarian extracts of it. But creatine is used for muscle growth. Like that's, that's the common kind of usage, but it's actually incredible for your brain. Um, it's it's a pre, uh, precursor to ATP which is what your cells use as energy. So when they say mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, it's because mitochondria is producing ATP, 
that's like the energy currency for your body uh which is one of the reasons why creatine is good for muscle growth um, it's also a neuroprotectant, and if you know that you're going to maybe do a binge or something weird, I don't judge, but it's like if you're going to get fucked up, if you take creatine, it will prevent the damage caused from methamphetamine. Uh, MDMA is related to methamphetamine as well. I'm not sure. I, I did this research a little while ago, so I'm sure there's new stuff. It can also protect against damage from stroke. So creatine. Way more magical than, than most people think it is. It's incredible. So in conclusion, plants are living, feeling organisms. If you treat them with love, they will likely produce less chemical toxins meant to harm their predators, people like you. Um, and yeah, just less stress. They're probably going to be growing more of the good stuff too. Uh, dose makes the poison, but also the medicine. So... Uh, I do feel like eating even large amounts of raw herbs is probably pretty safe. However, with the concentrates and extracts, like we were talking about with sage, um, it can actually be a neurotoxin. So be careful as far as that stuff. But you can get really weird with it. Like I didn't talk about psychedelics. I didn't talk about microdosing or anything. There's lots of better sources on that. Um, I went a little bit too far the other way on that. So I don't really... Uh, <laughs> talk about it too much but um, it's up for, it's up to you to determine that appropriate risk and reward ratio right so planetary and god form magic so this is this is the juicy stuff um i don't go into this super deeply here again because there's just better sources for it and we could talk about this a really really long time but this is your basic planetary kind of guide um so sun is success health energy the moon is intuition dreams and divination mars is action strength and defense mercury is travel thoughts and communication jupiter is expansion money and prosperity venus is love self-care and fertility and the spooky one saturn which is to protect and ground and also boundaries um so for for your specific goal you might want to pick one of these any of these can have a help help for a musician um one that's really common is venus venus is like a patron of the arts um but i try to go with things that i feel aren't super present in my life so um, originally I worked, did a lot of work with Lilith. Like you can see, if you're familiar with my black metal band, Sorgonasia, it's all Lilith worship. It's very one type of energy like that. Um, I worked with Venus a bit after for like a little bit of a lighter uh, uh, interpretation of goddess or feminine energy. Right now I'm doing some work with Jupiter. I wanna have something to say. Yeah. So I've been playing with different bands for the past 10 years mm -hmm. and uh, um, rehearsals, right? Yeah. Rehearsals is the, is, is, is the thing that either saves or kills the project, you know, the mm -hmm. group dynamic. And uh, I found that my favorite day for rehearsal is actually Wednesday. And oh, most nice. recently I came across this information too. And I, and I realized that on on Tuesdays we're very prone to conflict, to fight, yeah. You know, and if we wait one day, yeah, to fight. And if we wait, if we wait it out, like, and we get to get the next day on Wednesday, it all flows like we all communicate more fluently, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, so anyway, in other things I do in my life, like work um i found that wednesdays are the best days for meeting the best days the, the best days for planning mm -hmm. something out you know and i think that it's got everything to do with what with what you're showing us right now yeah i i 100 agree also you mentioned that you're aries too right 
Yes. Yeah. So um, I feel um, like people who yeah, are right. it, like you might have more of that Martian energy just by, you know, by virtue of your birth. So you might be more. Um, yeah. it doesn't, that doesn't account for other people's behavior for sure. Yeah. But I feel like for myself, I already have like pretty strong Martian energy. So although it might appeal to me, but it's like, yeah, I want I want to do some work with Mars. Like, I really want to get into that. It's like maybe you should work with something that you're not as comfortable or familiar with because you might be over exaggerating certain aspects of yourself and under us. So it's like the moon. I've never worked with the moon before. And I'm just like, do I really need to work with the moon? But that's who I'm going to work with next. I'm doing Jupiter was a very weird one for me. I'm working with Jupiter right now. And I have to say it is actually incredible. Like feeling a different type of energy, like a totally different type of energy expands your brain and your life in weird ways. Cause I was always very, I feel like I'm very naturally Martian. I'm very naturally Saturn. I'm very naturally Mercury. Right. And then I spent a long time working with Venus, but it's like my, those, my approach. Mm -hmm. But my recent approach has been trying to use Tuesdays to work corrections on songs that I ain't work cool. and to use Wednesdays to just repeat the rehearsal, you know? Yeah, that's Because on, on Tuesdays, we all, we, we're all defensive about our stuff, you know? And basically what comes out is like, I mean, in, in our best, in our best behavior, what comes out is a polished version of, 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 this, of, of the same work, mm -hmm. you know? If we don't fight that's good yeah <laughs> that's awesome um so just as a little bit of an exercise so just depending on your current goal what uh what planets do you, do you think just like aligns with you we can talk a little bit about other god forms but i feel like this is just such a simple and intuitively like um graspable kind of concept of universal energies and stuff i feel like it's just yeah very easy to grasp um you might want to take a moment or if anyone else wants to share like who they might pick for their goal So I will say one thing about Saturn. So um, I've been doing Carolyn Elliott's uh, influence course, and it's a really good course, expensive, but it was really good. Um, she warns against doing Saturn magic because our society is very uh, already very Saturn. So uh, really a stickler about time and very focused on death and materialism and not um it's not very intuitive it's not very friendly it's a very like competitive um structured kind of culture and so you might want to be worried when you're you might want to be careful doing work with saturn extensively because you don't want to become rigid and um even even more rigid and even more like I don't know, confined than we already are just being in a Saturn based kind of reality. And so let's leave that for now. Um, so yeah, I was just talking about this as far as like musical work. These, these are who I've been kind of working with. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like I need some moon energy in my life. Um, probably another round with mercury i really like that you know ease of communication again because i i am pretty martian i'm prone to being rude um <laughs> i'm prone to like uh communication issues and technological issues because that's supposed to be good for mercury too oh my lord like i'm so happy that this is just working because it's like my biggest fear is uh you know my amp exploding or something i'm so paranoid um the when i'm getting ready on stage is the most stressful time of my music career because I'm just like certain that something's gonna go wrong but anyways um I've heard of people working with pan with some success that's your classic kind of uh friendlier aspect of satan the one who plays the pipes pretty common if you listen to led zeppelin they've been talking about that for centuries 
Um, the sun can be really good for being seen and being okay with being seen. Good for uh, vitality and like health and stuff like that. Um, have you guys, have any of you like done uh, explicit like planetary magic at all? Or any specific like not, uh, not at all. I, I I was working with the moon energy, but okay. uh, more like in the in the moon cycles, uh, uh -huh. more like in the Mayan way of, of life. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Doing doing your year based on the moon, the thirteen moon cycle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh -huh. Have you done any like worship of the moon, like specifically? Not specifically to the moon. Okay. Um, so, uh, I'm just going to make a new slide here because I keep, uh, keep seeing where I missed stuff, stuff. Um, so you can build a small altar to a deity if you don't already have one, um, or planetary energy related to your goal. Um, you can also start like. Just gonna go like that. Um, wearing colors associated with that energy, all sorts of stuff. Like you know, you can eat foods associated with the energy. Are you just bored as hell, Jade? What's going on? Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> No. Okay. <laughs> also, I'm live. So oh, I'm okay, live. okay. Oh, that's 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 what that glazed look <laughs> is. I'm like, <laughs> am I a joke to you? Just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm taking jokes. I'm taking no, no, it's all good. It's all good. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. You're 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 number one on my screen, so I just gotta keep bugging you. <laughs> all right, so that's that stuff's all pretty. I feel like this is all pretty like common esoteric kind of stuff. You gotta but Sorry? I got a little. Yeah, sure. Story. Yeah, I got a little. I, I think I had a little experience with it, but I wasn't fully aware of what was going on. So okay. I'm going to try to be short in my story because it's kind of convoluted. Um, basically, I uh, I got into the occult because I became a, a, a parent, right? I got the, a four year old kid, and I was atheist, you know, before, uh -huh. before that. And uh, long story short, I'm not anymore. Mm -hmm. Well, in my case, I wasn't really sure what was what what was going on. I was going through what I, I mean, what most people call an awakening, right? Like a moment yeah. of clarity that is very violent and, and sh sh shakes your emotions really hard. Yeah, I had that too. Challenges the, the foundation of what you, what you believe. So this went on for about a year and I, I'm the kind of guy who just uh, investigates everything to, mm -hmm. to the deepest level possible. Mm -hmm. and, and I really try to, to use my, my, like, uh, my education as a tool to mm -hmm. understand what's going on and i started to have some spooky experiences in my house mm -hmm. in my household things became to, to become very weird uh, along the same times i became I, I got a lot of dark synchronicities and good synchronicities too mm -hmm. i didn't know what those were at the time um i'm, I'm guessing most people know what i'm talking about yes yeah, and yeah. i just started to get very scared you know Be yeah and I'm Scary. a musician, right? I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm ba basically I'm trying to keep my shit together. Yeah. And I also want to make a beautiful work because I I got I got this this radio in my head, right? I listen to this music that is beautiful when I get very very in touch with with my inspiration. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'm I'm very in tune with it, and sometimes I'm just not. Yeah. And so I'm starting to get this like. Um, strong vibe that I'm supposed to do something and I don't know what is that and I start to get weird dreams and, yeah and I dream about colors and I that's what I that's why I said something I started to get this this uh constant re reminiscence reminder in my mind of the color of the violet color 
which is, which is violet, you know. That that's and, usually associated with Jupiter. I started to to. Well, I, I'm not even I'm not even sure. That maybe that's why I'm here. The, the <laughs> thing is that I, I I don't even know what what I did. Mm-hmm. You know, what really happened was that I was trying to logically put it into like this male energy type thing, like trying to understand it, and I couldn't. I was just stressing myself out. I couldn't get any sleep. Mm-hmm. I was uh, doing a lot of weed. <laughs> and and I was so stressed out that I was just losing my mind. Mm-hmm. And this night, I <clears throat> I heard this voice in my head, got very spooked. I even went to the doctors. I got some therapy after that. Mm-hmm. I I really wanted to get to the bottom of it because uh, basically, what happened was an isolated incident. It has never happened again. Mm-hmm. I'm not a schizo. Um, mm-hmm. What happened was I, I heard this voice. I knew it was living in my imagination, but it was communicating with me with words, with my words, you know, and it was it was my voice, but it wasn't me. I mean, I, I wasn't I wasn't it, it wasn't my intention, you know. It was my voice. It had no air. It was only like the vowels. It was like this this creep or crunch. It was weird. It was a mm. different sound that wasn't in my eardrums. It was in yeah. my mind, but I wasn't commanding it. I wasn't in I, I, this when when I heard that I wasn't in command, and I got so fucking scared. I got the chills. I was outside at my mom's place, mm-hmm. and, and I started to have a conversation with her. And how long and ago I, was that? I thought because of the nature of the things that I, this was three years ago. Uh huh. Because of the nature of the things I was investigating, I got into Santana, Carlos Santana. You know, mm-hmm. I'm from Mexico. And so I got into the whole occult side of what Santana says about his work. And mm-hmm. at some point I got, before this happened, I was thinking to myself, maybe this met- metatron uh, person or being or devil or God or whatever energy he is talking about is trying to talk to me. Yeah. Because what he's saying is that this force or whatever talks to musicians in general, mm-hmm. you know, and and the, and and some of us are able to hear, you know, and when you hear, you just need to play because you might lose it. Mm-hmm. So my approach was, how do I get there consciously, right? Yeah. How do I control this inspirational moment where I'm there, I'm listening to this beautiful music from the sky. And I'm putting it into into reality. Mm-hmm. You know, that was my thing, and and then I heard the voices, you know. And mm-hmm. so I got so scared. I I I thought this whatever thing wanted my child because I was scared, and basically I did not, not cooperate with whatever it was at all. I I invoke it. I I I I said the name of Jesus Christ for the mm-hmm. first time in my life with like with a real intention of protecting myself and mm-hmm. i said that in the name of jesus everything that is in this place it is not yours to take and i try to imagine myself under this blue bubble of light because that's just my go-to protection you know yeah i just try to uh, visualize like this blue energy around mm-hmm. me and no one can get into that it's like well my my energy right yeah so i did that and i called upon jesus and i had the voice stopped you know mm-hmm. and and that was it. Funny thing, uh, my band um, had a dream with me the same very night. The very same night, they they had a dream with about me, and and they called me up the next day. You know, and they were they basically said, I, I don't know why, but I feel like we need to to get together and, and, and play. Mm-hmm. And and I I I only told one of them because one of them told me like he was very specific where uh-huh. I I was trying to reach him. I'm sorry, I gotta kind of wrap it up was, because we're running really instrument. late. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm it's right okay. Now. Yeah, no, it's like all I good. Said, it's yeah, I would love to hear more have... about it. Um, I don't know if anybody else has had a similar experience. You know? That's what I wanted to. I've definitely questioned my own like sanity. Oh, okay, yeah. Can we all? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think that's a pretty common experience for for musicians. Um, 
I haven't had the exact same experience as you, but it's kind of spooky, kind of similar. Uh, yeah, I'm glad that you know their grounding stuff. And Jesus will help you. He gets a bad rap because his, you know, the Catholic Church is fucked. Uh, you know, all that stuff is, like, really fucked up. But it's, like, the God form that is Jesus, the energy sphere that is Jesus, is your friend. He does not care if you talk shit about him. You can talk shit about Jesus all day, every day. And it's, like, he will still just, like, pat you on the head and be, like, it's okay, kid. You're dumb as hell. Like... <laughs> Which is such a weird experience for people who, like, you know, I spent my entire life blaspheming, you know, just insane. And he doesn't care. He's, he's like, he's like this very far away dad. But there's nothing you could do that could ever piss Jesus off. Like, he's just, like, you're a dumb mortal. He doesn't care. Like, <laughs> he's still there for, to help you out if you need him. Um, he's got nothing to do with the Catholics. I don't know. Just the church in general. He, he gets a bad rap. As far as I'm concerned. But anyways. So we talked about that. Megan, my question is. If you make an oh. altar. Like if you. If you make an altar to a deity. Yeah. Like with the colors. And with the offerings. And all, yeah. Like. And let's say at some point. It, it manifests to the point. Where you really don't know. What you. What, you and you, know, you really don't like it. Or whatever. What to mm -hmm. do. With it, what to do next. Well. There's exactly. a. That's an interesting question. Well, where you, what do you do next? So. Um, there's like a number of different banishing rituals that you can do. Honestly, just banging a pot around your house and screaming fuck off is actually surprisingly effective. Um, if you can laugh mm -hmm. about it and you can well, just say heard. like, sure, right. you're, you're fucking with me. Like, yeah. yeah, you can, you can laugh it out of existence. You can tell it to fuck off. You can do like more formal right. stuff. You can do some cultural appropriation, sage burning or San Paulo burning, um, you know, there's there's all sorts of stuff that you can do to um, get rid of that kind of stuff. Uh, as, as as far as planetary energies, they're all pretty friendly. Like, you know, except for maybe Saturn. Saturn's a little bit of a bully. Like, they all have their excesses and stuff, too. But I feel like if you are, you know, in a good headspace and you're, you know praying to your ancestors and you're asking for like ancestral help on the regular i don't really talk about that in this class but having a good relationship with the nature spirits in your area and with your ancestors by like burning candles burning incense and stuff to them on the regular like you can just say hey great 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 grandma great 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 grandpa like can you get rid of this fucking thing and like they they generally have your back too um but yeah th those <laughs> You can always get rid of your altar if your altar is bugging you. You can always just say, fuck it, I'm done with this, and uh, and and move forward as well, right? Okay. All right, so I'm going to just try to move along quickly here. We don't have too much more stuff left. Making your instruments into servitors. So... Um, you can make an instrument, paintbrush, computer program, or whatever your weapon of creation is into an even more tuned, powerful, and sacred tool for your work. What exactly is a servitor? So a servitor is basically like a little entity that you can create uh, through magic to give, uh, to achieve a specific purpose. Um, it's like a little line, oops, whoa, what am I doing here? Uh, it's like a little line of computer programming that does one specific task, runs in the background, and makes your life a little bit easier. Um, Working Dragon Mystic has a really good video on them that's a little bit more in depth. So your tools, your guitar, your your computer, your recording programs, all of that stuff is already a servitor because it's serving you. Right, it's already a pe like all matter has a consciousness. All matter is alive. If I'm using this matter to help me out on a regular basis, it gets my energy. It's already kind of feeding off of me. So you know, there's just something different about playing someone else's guitar, and it's not necessarily the setup. It's not necessarily like the physical thing. It just feels weird because it's like it, it's not juicy with your own energy yet. It's not ripe yet. Um, so this is just talking about making your stuff a little bit riper, even, right? So you can make that energy stronger, more direct, by setting specific intentions and creating a magical sigilized name for your item. 
So in this example, I use my main guitar uh, that I use for Sorganasia. I I already did this, so I'm not going to do it all over for you, but I'll show you what I did. So I know that uh, Jade has a new cello. Is it cello that you're playing, my yes, girl? Yes, I do. Yay! Yeah. Did you name it yet? No. Oh, no. oh, oh yeah. that's juicy. Now you can... Maybe you can make it a sigilized name. Oh. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do in terms of that, but I definitely, uh, I definitely plan on staining it with some blood and doing like a little ritual in yes. that regard yes. to charge it with my energy. Yes. Oh, yes. Awesome. So this is very similar to that. You can maybe use some of this stuff if you're not familiar with it to help, help, uh, you know, put some even more intention into that. So um, how I did this was created, I created a sigilized name first. So I wanted my guitar to be a conduit for sorcery, force, genius. I want it to just have a lot of punch, right? Because it's a black metal uh, demon conjuring machine, right? So I'm sure a lot of you guys have made sigils before. So we follow that same thing. We write out what we want, the, the words. Oh my God, I keep grabbing that stuff. And then we cross out all of the repeating letters and vowels. And then we make a new word using those letters and vowels of your choosing. You can all also do this. Um, so this is making a word uh, sigil. You can make a sigilized, like just little, um, like a like a symbol, but I do like giving it a verbal sigil because again we're audio we're we're vibrational maniacs, so it's nice to have an an audio kind of sound to go with it. And whenever you're doing any type of sigil work, it should give you that jolt. It should just be a little bit exciting when you when you hit that that thing. Like it should just make you a little bit excited. That's that's the the ether reacting to your thoughts, right? So I tried a bunch of different stuff. Uh, Sagaira is kind of where I ended up. I think it's pretty. It it gave me a little bit of excitement. Even just when I said it to you guys just now, that's the first time I think I said it out loud. So, <laughs> um, the initial charging of the servitor. So, like I said, if it's an instrument and stuff that you're already holding in your hands a lot, you're already giving a lot of attention to, it will kind of pick that stuff up gradually. But there are several ways to charge a servitor quickly, um, such as working into an ecstatic state through an extended playing session. Uh, you can chant the name over it while you're playing. You can intone it in a number of different ways. Uh, you can dance with it. You can uh, masturbate to orgasm and send the energy into the item. Lots of different ways to charge a sigil. I love blood magic too. I think blood magic is incredible. So if That's you, yeah, yeah, so it's awesome. Yeah, like my guitar is, uh, it's finished. So if you're using something with unfinished wood, hell yes, right? Um, so choose the energy source for your servitor. So you should choose something that's ongoing. Um, so you can have that initial jolt of energy through blood, through whatever ritual that you do to do the initial kind of creation of the servitor, but you still need to feed your servitor. So I like to pick multiple energy sources because sometimes I just don't practice that much and that's no good. So um, I do allow the energy of my hands to feed it as well as electromagnetic energy that falls from the pickups. Um, I let other sound in the environment. I just, you can choose whatever the hell you want. Again, whether it's real or not, your thoughts are going to influence what you believe and how you act. And it's, it's got all that fantastic stuff, right? So pick whatever you think makes sense. So if you're talking about, uh, a computer, you could say that radio signals or Wi-Fi signals, like, charge the metaphysical energy of your servitor. It should be something that's consistent, or you can even hold these things and purposely charge them on a regular basis. So just whatever makes sense for your item. You are creating a little life form, basically. So try to, try to baby it a little bit. 
Um, this is an optional step. So once it's created and you're feeding it, um, if it served its purpose, you can let it go. So I had a servitor that was helping me with a court case, for example. After the court case was decided and my legal issues were determined, I dismissed the servitor. So um, if you do end up dismissing it, or you should just you should just say thank you to it anyways if it's doing ongoing work for you. Um, but if you are going to set it free, you can just say, like, I dissolve you, I free you, etc., and meditate on the dissolving of that energy. And we should just be saying thank you and expressing sincere gratitude for literally everything all the time. Can't say it enough. Um, for myself, I write down the name and tape it onto the object or paint it onto the object because I need to work more on my memory. <laughs> Again, I need, I, need, I need more mercury in my life or something because um, I just need to write it down because I'll, I'll forget about it. Um, as with art and with life, experiment boldly and you might be surprised at the results. So again, for when you're feeling some skepticism or you feel like it might not work out, just fucking go for it. It's fun, too. Like, life is fucking boring. Make it exciting. Conjure some demons. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll I'll just go over... So I got, I got a couple little plugs here, and then we'll go over the key takeaways and stuff. So if you enjoyed yourself today, I think you guys might have had some fun with me today. Um, if you had a good time today, you can help me out. You can give me a review on Facebook or Google. Uh, you can sign up for the newsletter at guitarwitch.ca. Um, coming to future webinars, events, share, liking, and commenting. It does make a big difference for people that are selling stuff or doing stuff in the online space. Um, you can always support my music, following me on all the different platforms. You can also just like pay me for a course, all that good stuff. Um, my book is coming out. You can pre-order that. It's for beginner guitar, but I make sure to uh, sneak in all the good esoteric stuff, even uh, easily digestible for the kitties. So that makes it really fun. Um, yeah, all that stuff is at my website, guitarist.ca. Also, again, I'm hiring. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you up, Jade. So yeah, if you just, uh, if you know anyone, maybe, maybe, maybe Jade's just already solving that issue for me. But if you know anyone that's like killer with video editing stuff like that, I fucking hate it. I've learned so much stuff, and I just, I'm so, so over it. All right, made it to the end. Questions? Any questions or comments so far? Well, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. For sharing welcome. your knowledge with us. I learned a couple of, of uh, different things today, so that's always nice. Oh, that's awesome. I'm really glad to hear that. Um, okay, that's cool. That's cool. Thank you, Jade. Um, so we'll just, before we end off here, key takeaways. So you and your music are precious, important, stardust. Amazing. If anything in the <laughs> universe is important, you're important too. You can't say one thing's important and anything's and something else isn't. You're it's all the same matter. Um, you are always doing magic. All of your thoughts have forced them and impact the quality of your life. You should have had one juicy key goal written down that makes you just excited for life. If you don't, you can always write it down later. I know it's pretty pretty quick in class here. So, um, I want you to spend some time on a regular basis until that goal is achieved. Digging deep to figure out what you love about your current life and all of its shittiness and whatever bullshit you're dealing with. There's some kinky part of you that says step harder daddy, right? <laughs> and we can just laugh at it, right? <laughs> <laughs> um yes and what you fear and resent about your goal yeah getting stuff is just as scary as not having stuff and again that's that's a taboo thing to kind of work through um i want you to work with some energies beyond yourself that you can help pull into yourself and into your goals so we talked about some of the plants 
um, God form and planetary allies. Those are like really, really big topics that, you know, you can do a lot more research. This is just kind of a quick overview. Um, we talked about servitors. I love the concept of servitors. It's just like, again, anything you can do to like make your life a little bit more exciting, make your work a little bit more exciting. It's like, if everything around me has this personality and is alive, like that just makes my life better. And if I can say thank you and it says thank you back, even if it's all in my head, I don't really care if I'm nuts or not. It just makes my life better. Um, as far as your goal goes, I know that um, you might not feel totally comfortable sharing your goal with you know, a stranger or with someone in your life, but find someone, even if it is like a random internet buddy, um, maybe even in like the, in the group here or whatever that you can tell your stuff to makes a big difference and make sure that you have some sort of system of accountability to keep your interest and your energy up. Cause there's nothing that motivates you like a, like a goal. Like I was literally editing this Well, I was editing this while I was live, but <laughs> I was editing this like down to the last second. So having that stuff kind of going on definitely, definitely helps. Um, I'm going to get rid of that guy. That's for my other one. Oh my goodness. And then that one's from this one. Oh yeah. Anyways. Oh, how did your belly done? Well, I'll ask you about it later. Oh, it's okay. Yeah, uh, I, yeah, I do belly dance stuff. There's like so much, so much goodies if you follow the website and all that stuff. Um, I am doing another dance class on Wednesday evening. Um, the so like I, I always have this thing between doing my weird witchy esoteric stuff and doing my like trying to relate to the normal. Uh, population kind of stuff and it seems that like the stuff that's like really witchy and weird seems to be more popular so with the dance one I'm gonna be offering like a dance like a metal gothic post-punk uh, yeah and see and see like we, when you say it like when I say it it's like it feels juicy it feels exciting it's way more exciting yeah. to me yeah. so uh the shaken bliss though is really fun it's very relaxing um I do recommend it um it's also helping me kind of get used to doing the live streams helping me get used to talking while I'm dancing is very weird um it's very difficult um so going slow and everything it's it's uh definitely kind of helping ease me into it but anyways thank you so much for coming you guys and for being such great participants i really loved hearing about your stuff i'm really excited to hear your musical works and um you, i'm very accessible you can always you know message me on facebook or i'm going to post this to youtube you can always post um youtube comments and stuff like that and i will always respond um yeah anyways I'll see you next time. I'm probably going to do more of these because there's there's lots of stuff. So yeah. Thank you very much for you guys sharing. You're so welcome. Have a great day, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you.